Kelvin here for another edition of Correct Me If I'm Wrong and once again we're comfortably ensconced in the Ottawa Life Magazine offices in downtown Ottawa just steps from Parliament Hill and today we have a very interesting uh, topic that we're going to discuss it's about energy prices, energy prices in Ontario in particular now it's no secret to anyone living in Ontario that energy, energy prices have gone through the ceiling uh, in the last uh, five years a lot of people trace this back to a a rather perverse uh, energy plan that the province has brought in. Uh, one of the challenges of course though is that um, in a province that has a debt of 312 billion dollars one of the government's solutions to this has been to sell off the provincial energy utility. You know, the fact is that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, all the numbers show that they can only get a maximum of, of nine million dollars, nine billion dollars for the sale of Ontario Hydro and that will pay literally nine months interest on the provincial debt. So why would we pawn our birthright and sell our energy utility? Well that's a really good question and uh, I'm going to have a discussion right now about energy in Ontario with a lady who became quite famous a couple of weeks ago, Kathy Catula, hello, oh. who is in town from uh, Buckhorn which is close to Peterborough. Yep. Now Kathy you're in town because today there was a, a protest against the, the new carbon uh, pricing scheme that the federal government wants to bring in but also you're in town to uh, attend an event tomorrow night with Kevin O'Leary I believe yes. but so I want to put that stuff aside because you know the federal government's announced they're going ahead with their carbon plan um, I want to sort of dig down and go back to the Ontario issue um, you went to the Prime Minister's town hall and you got very emotional at one point about your energy bill. Uh, it is a provincial matter, but can you just take us back and just tell us uh, what your energy issue was? Um, well, I found that since 2014, my, my hydro bills used to run me. In the summertime, I was paying like 140, 150, and in the winter, I would pay two to 300. Once I had a bill that got up to 500. In January of 2015, after a very mild December, I expected to get a hydro bill around $300. My bill came in at $989. That's pretty shocking. Yes. Did, did, why was it that high? I don't know. I normally burn wood, which I hadn't even had to do yet, and I also have a propane fireplace, which I haven't even really used. So I called Hydro One thinking the meter was broken. That was the first thing. This thing's got to be broken. Their explanation to me was, I live rural. They you, li you live rural? I'm considered rural, So yes. they told you that because you live rural, that's a problem? My delivery rate, my delivery on that $989 bill was $287. Had they given you any notice prior to that that your rate was going to go up? No. So it just jumped, it literally jumped. hundreds of dollars, yeah. and they told you it's because you live rural. They said it was the... They told me that it was my fault, that I must have baseboard heat, and I must have left the baseboard heat do on Do you have baseboard home. heat? I do have it in my home, and the only place I use it is in my bedroom at night, set at 10, and one of my bathrooms set at 10. Okay, and what other type of heat do you have? I have a propane fireplace, Napoleon fireplace, that pretty much heats the house I use on the main floor. And I have a wood fireplace that I use in my family room on the floor that I live in. So, when you went to speak to the Prime Minister, uh, you asked him the question and can you just remind us of what his response was? Um, he was shocked. Like, I, when I told him the price of my hydro bill, like, the look on his face, like, he literally bowed his head, like, like almost like he was disgusted. Now, let me ask you, because it was a very emotional moment, uh, the Prime Minister answered your question, he uh, he noted that it's a provincial jurisdiction, I believe. Mm -hmm. Now after that, because you really hit a nerve, I think, with a lot of people in Ontario who are facing these bills, there's a big question that I always get though when I've brought this up. After that, you hugged the Prime Minister, you was all chummy chummy. Can you just respond to that? What was that about? Um, because I think online in today's social media world, <laughs> if I may, uh, that's been, uh, that, that's, that's been on a real back again and <laughs> yeah, again and again. Yeah. So what do you have to say to the critics who say, well then, you know, she had all this criticism for the Prime Minister, then she's hugging the guy. Well, what that was, was like, I really feel like he genuinely felt my pain when I was speaking. And 
I was still shaking and crying through the whole rest of his sure. meeting. And when he came time to thank us for being there, he, when I looked him in the eye, he said, thank you for coming. But then he said, we're going to fix it. That's when I broke down. That was like, I truly believed he was going to fix it. And do you still believe that? I haven't heard from him since that meeting. Have you heard from anyone <laughs> in his office? Absolutely not. Have you heard from anyone in the Premier's office? No. Have you heard from anyone at Ontario Hydro? No. Have you heard from anyone in the Energy uh, Ministry? No. Have you heard from possibly the CEO of Ontario Hydro who gets paid about $4 million a year? <laughs> no. Nobody. So Absolutely. nobody has contacted you since then? No. One of the things that I found interesting about this, um, and I actually spent quite a bit, I don't normally spend a lot of time on social media, but I, I actually was following this stream on a social media posting that I, that I follow, and I was surprised at how nasty some of the comments were. They were suggesting that, uh, some were suggesting that, you know, $50,000 a year, that that's not poverty. <laughs> yeah. uh, others were suggesting that, well, you must you must have really badly a badly insulated home others were suggested you don't have the proper windows obviously a lot of yeah, things they don't know not <laughs> knowing you. so it's your what, what do you respond what's your response to that um well first of all the big response i got was people that didn't live in canada like they were just appalled to think that they could have a bill like that so i like was called a liar by a lot of people that didn't even live in canada because who could have bills that high, you know? And so I literally, to prove I wasn't lying, I copied my hydro bill and I posted it right online. And Hydro One did try to call me and I, I right after it went online, and I refused to speak to him. Okay, so do you, what, now hang on, so Hydro One did call you after that? Yeah, just after I posted the bill, like three and days after. And what was the purpose of their call? They just wanted to know if, if I could I would talk to them. And I said, I'm sorry, I don't. Give me a couple days and you can call me back. They never called me back. Okay, now I'm just curious, why wouldn't you talk to them when they did call? Well, because I had tried to talk to them several times throughout the year, and when they shut me off in July, they wouldn't speak to me then. So, so now let's go back to July. Why did they shut you off in July? Um, I had, on July 1st holiday, um, I paid online for my right. payment. And at that time, I was on what they call a payment plan, where your bills get so high, they allow you to pay it out over a period of time. Okay. So I was paying an extra 200 a month on top of my bill. So I paid $680 online on July 1st. On July 6th, I was notified my hydro was shut off. So was all of this after, so, so, so let me, just for accuracy, you'd been paying your bill regularly, then you got this big spike in your bills. Yeah. And I, is that when you fell, started falling behind? Right. Because okay. I'm used to paying three, four hundred a month, and suddenly I got an eight and nine hundred dollar hydro bill. Well, I live from check to check like a lot of people do. Right. So. Right. What would your message be to the premier or to Ontario Hydro or to the Minister of Energy if you could speak to them directly? And and you're just to be clear, you're saying that after all of this, you didn't get a call from the premier or any official in the government. What about your member par your local member of parliament, or I spoke to Jeff Neal. Okay. Bill, I'm sorry. And I took my bills in and he looked at them and he said, your Peter's got to be broken. <laughs> that was his response. Okay. Um, what would you like to say to the people running our energy utility in the province and to the Premier? I would like to say that this, that I know I'm not alone. I'm like one of thousands of people who are struggling. Like, do you, my paycheck is going to pay hydro. <laughs> do you think they get it or they're listening or that they're listening? I think now they are listening because people, like that day when I spoke to Justin Trudeau, I didn't realize it was being televised all over the world. And now that the rest of the world knows, it's no, their little secrets out, you know, they have to answer to the people. Do you expect that when the Prime Minister said he was going to do something, do you expect that he will? Um, I expected that he would be working with Premier Wynne to, um, to take care of it and I have heard that she's working on like a, exactly a week later there was um, a news thing where she had said she was working on removing the delivery cost. Okay. So I think they're working on it. It's sure. a long ways to go. Okay well uh, Kathy I, I want to thank you for coming down here today and I want to point out to our listeners that uh, I, I've 
obviously just met Kathy today. She's not a political person. No. She's not a, an activist <laughs> or anything like this. Or I go from now on. <laughs> well, voting is important, uh, but uh, it's important that uh, yeah, I think the thing that gra grabbed a lot of people, myself included, was your authenticity. And I'm, you know, I think it's interesting that. Um, that uh, you're still waiting to hear from people. So we'll, we'll follow that and see what happens. Anyways, that's, that's it for today for Correct Me If I'm Wrong. I want to thank all of our, uh, our listeners again. And we're again at Ottawa Life Magazine here in downtown Ottawa. Thank you very much.